How's it going? It's going good. Good. So, what I always like to ask people on my podcast, uh, the first question I always like to ask is, where are you from? Uh, I am from Southern California, born and raised. Um, I grew up in San Dimas. And then uh, I went to school in Riverside, so I lived in Riverside for six years or so, and that's where you and I met doing um, RL Theatricals production of uh, Mulan, right? Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yep. That was fun. Yeah, Yeah, it was fun. And then I moved to Anaheim, and uh, I've been here for about three years. Hmm. Um, What is the first show you remember seeing? First show I remember seeing. Um, oh, I don't know. I I remember seeing Wicked um, at the Pantages in Los Angeles. Um, that might have been the first like real professional um, production that I that I saw. Um, but I remember watching watching stuff on TV and and everything growing up. So. But yeah. Probably Wicked was the first like live show that I that I saw on a professional level. Mm. And um I was going through your Instagram and I saw that you did a um thing with Universal Studios, the Who's the Who singing. Yeah. How was the audition process for that? Like Um so it it's a it's a little different. So like for for Grinchman, this is what the whole event's called at Universal Studios. Um, they, they audition like in like different, um, categories depending on what kind of who you're auditioning for. So like they have the like roaming, um, actor who's that are like interacting with guests. Um, and those would be like our atmosphere who's, and they have a a separate audition. Um, that's like, uh, uh, I actually have no idea because I never auditioned for them. Uh, but then they have like still walking who's they, they have all sorts of stuff. But my particular group um, was a, a boy band singing group that we did uh, like five shows a day throughout um, the event. Uh, and so our audition process was uh, we show up one day and we have, uh, you know, like a verse chorus 32 bar cut of a, a pop song that we liked in the style of like boy band. Um, and then if you got a call back and we came back, we learned uh, a dance, um, uh, uh, the, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm totally like, it shows you I'm not a real dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a little, a movement, uh, uh, dance call. And then, um, and then we learned a, a song together too. And then that was callbacks. And then, and then they, they cast it from that. Oh, it's a, that's pretty typical for, um, for theme parks stuff is like you you go in with a like a traditional musical theater style audition here's my resume hi my name is connor smith i'm gonna be singing moving too fast from the last five years and then if they like you they bring you back for callbacks or you actually do material from the the show you're auditioning for Hmm. that sounds cool yeah yeah um do you have any pre-show rituals pre-show rituals Um, it depends on the show because, uh, a a lot of what I, I do, that's like my, my day to day stuff is the theme park work. Um, and so that, you know, each show is different, but so like when I I do, um, frozen for, for instance, at Disneyland, my particular role in frozen is not nearly as demanding as some of the other shows that I do at Disney. Oh, I know that ahead of time. So if I'm doing Disney Junior Dance Party and I know that I have to be screaming in the rafters the whole time, mm-hmm. I prepare differently. I warm up more. I stretch more. Um, whereas Frozen, you know, it's like getting puppet work. So I do like different hand exercises. Um, so it, it, it's a little different for ev- for every single show that you're doing. Um, but I know that it's a, it's a challenge to myself to like constantly be mindful about what I'm about to do and how I need to both prepare my body and my mind for hmm. what is about to happen. Yeah, that's interesting. Cause like Olaf's a puppet. So mm-hmm. do you do you ever get like hand cramps doing that? Yeah, um, a little bit. 
Um, thankfully, we at, for for Olaf, he's in he's only in a handful of scenes in the the um, Disneyland production. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, you you definitely have to make sure you're doing. There's little hand stretches that they teach us and <laughs> whatnot to uh, uh, make sure that we're loose. Because I mean, just like any uh, any um, uh, show that you do, like, like if you had a heavy dance role, you are gonna make sure that you're stretching your legs and you're you're stretching your whole body um, before the show. So for yes. for Olaf, you know, there's it's much smaller muscles that you're using, but uh, yes. uh, they also require to. Uh, get warmed up and stretched yeah uh, how is performing at the hyperion theater at disneyland as olaf um it's it's amazing i i have really really loved my experience um at the hyperion um and we're working for disney in general but particularly um at the hyperion you know it's the biggest show that that disneyland does um and just it's it's always packed it blows my mind that like at 3 p.m. on a Monday, we pack 2,000 people in that theater. Um, but so so it's incredibly humbling to walk out there every day um, that I'm out there to totally full audiences um, and to work with some incredibly talented people in our cast. Um, it's it's a real gift, and I'm I'm really really honored to to be a part of the cast. Yeah, how was the audition process for that? So for um, for Frozen, um, so D- Disney does um, what what they call um, in-house auditions. Um, like about once a year, they have like open calls for anybody to come in and audition for stuff. But then as the year goes on, um, if they only need you know to replace one Olaf or one person in one show. They're not going to have a, a full open call and see thousands and thousands of people um, when they only need like the one or two roles. Um, so specifically for Olaf, they had somebody leave the show, so they needed um, somebody else to come in um, to kind of fill out the schedule. Um, and so I was already working at Disney doing the, the Disney Junior Dance Party, um, and so they they called me in to to come, um, and that was like going straight into a callback. So it because I, I already. Uh, work at Disney. I'm already a cast member, so it it, uh, it wasn't like I had to introduce myself. Like the casting directors and, and creative team already knew who I was. So I'm just going in to show them I can do this role that you need. Um, so they they I came in and, and they had asked me to prepare um, the uh, the fireside scene with Anna where Olaf starts to melt, mm-hmm. um, and. Uh, and to sing in summer, hmm. um, so that was that was my audition process for that. And then once I got past that round, then I had to learn uh, a little ballroom um, uh, segment from um, from one of the one of the numbers uh, because before I go into the Olaf puppet, I'm in the ensemble for the first half of hmm. of the show, um, so I, I still had to dance and, and all that stuff. So um, then once I got past that round. Then we had a puppet audition. Um, thankfully, I had a little bit of experience doing puppetry already. Um, good. Olaf is a very, very complicated puppet. Uh, <laughs> he has triggers for his eyes, his eyebrows, uh, his mouth, his blinks, um, in addition to like moving the head and his arms and his feet. So he, there's a lot going on. Um, but so like really quickly, they tried to give me a crash course. Um, how it works and then they had me redo that fireside scene where Olaf melts um, with the puppet and um, the directors thought I was close enough to uh, go into the rehearsal process at least um, so yeah that's how that would work yeah that's that's cool yeah yeah uh, how do you prepare for a role um well thankfully if it's a role that has already been originated or done, which most of the stuff that I've done is um, YouTube and and you know finding the original movie or book or whatever the, the thing's based on, just kind of like absorbing all of the source material that I can. 
Um, so like for Frozen, I'd, I'd already seen the movie, um, but I hadn't really like really studied the movie. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. difference between just like passively watching something versus watching something because you're going to be in the show. Um, so I like really kind of absorbed it. I went and saw the production. Um, I listened to the Broadway show, you know, just to kind of like really wrap my mind around like who is this character um, and all that stuff. And I mean, we live in, in an amazing day and age where so much of this material is online and it just comes down to doing your homework. Um, and so, so it's super, super important when, <laughs> when, uh, when I know that there's people that are like, they just got cast in a show and they've never heard of it. They don't know anything about it. Like, go watch it on YouTube. I bet you can find a production of it somewhere. Um, and not that you want to like copy what other people are doing, obviously, but, but just to give yourself an idea of what a fully realized um, production is, because it's, it is different um, to actually see something on its feet than to just read um, the script. But obviously that part is, is super important too. Yes. Um, because then when, if you, if you, really got into it and you got cast in a show that the role had not been done before and you're originating something you have to be able to read a script and to pull things out of it to to read between the lines and to create a character just based off words on the page Mm -hmm. so both skills are super important Mm -hmm. oh yeah Uh, what motivates you um in what what way like what kind of hmm. what do you mean <laughs> i mean um like hmm. like what motive like theater um do you do you um look up to anyone in theater um i think i, I look up to a lot of people um like Lin Manuel Miranda is a, a big one, um, because not only is he just a, like an incredible performer, but he also is an incredible writer, um, incredible show creator, and has created roles for himself um, that he didn't see represented in the like standard theater canon already. Um, so he's definitely somebody somebody that I look up to as a, as like a creator. Um, I also really love um, Pasek and Paul, mm-hmm. who are the show creators of Dear Evan Hansen and uh, The Greatest Showman. They did the music for The Greatest Showman and La La Land. Um, and then one of my favorite musicals that's a little more um, off the beaten path, I guess, is Dogfight. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's actually how the first Pasek and Paul musical that I ever listened to was Dogfight. Um, and uh, so. So yeah, I would say those those two are two of my my biggest like inspirations, um, because I I'm obviously a, a performer, but it's not the only thing that I do. It's not the only thing that like motivates me or that side of my career, um, because I'm also a, a composer and a writer, um, and so having that kind of like creative side of the arts in addition to being a performer um i find myself constantly like in between two worlds because it, it's pretty i mean like lin-manuel miranda is the exception to the rule for for most of these like show creators and whatever they are not performers or at least not performers anymore um they're solely focused on creating um, and then you have performers that don't know how to read music or don't know how to play piano or whatever, mm-hmm. um, are not musically trained at all. So like to have, to be in both of those worlds, um, is, it's definitely interesting. Um, and I, I really enjoy that part of my career in terms of like being able to bounce around different circles, um, and not just having to do the same thing every day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, what was your first main role that you played? My first, well, the first musical I ever did was, uh, was Zombie Prom. 
oh. my freshman year in high school. Uh, I was just in the ensemble. I want to say my character's name was Joey. Mm -hmm. I was one of one of the main guy's best friends. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah. That, but then my first like leading role was uh, in How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. I played uh, Finch, mm -hmm. and that was really my like, hey, I'm pretty good at this. Like that's kind of when I realized that. So like you're super lucky because you've been doing theater forever like since you were a little kid you know what I mean yeah and I didn't, I didn't start doing musicals until I was in high school um so yeah when you get to high school you're gonna be like way better than I was when I was in <laughs> just in terms of like sheer experience yeah thank you you're um welcome. and we're gonna wrap up soon but I just want to ask you one more question um what advice would you give to your younger self or younger people listening now starting down the similar path? Um, there's a lot of advice that I would give. Yeah. Uh, first, um, being an actor, being a performer, being in the music industry in any capacity requires like an intense level of self-awareness. Um, so you have to know like how you look, how you sound, how you come off to other people, how you act in a physical space. Because as an actor, you have to be able to mold all of that to fit any different um, character description or role. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition to that, like there are knowing where like what kind of roles you will get immediately can hone you into saying like, this is where I'm gonna focus. So like me, I know I am never gonna get like the like dance heavy roles <laughs> in any like dance show. Like, cause I can move, but I'm not like a dancer dancer, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, like I can fake my way through a five, six, seven, eight, but don't give me a whole segment. <laughs> so, uh, so like that's, and that's just, I know that about myself. Um, so finding your self awareness and, and, and listening to, to that is a big part of it. Um, but then like on the other side of the coin, the advice I would give is to don't put yourself in a box, um, uh, in saying like, I can only do this. Um, or I can only sing this way, or I can only act this way, I can only do this kind of role. Um, because you want to, to open yourself up to different kinds of opportunity. I think some of the like coolest things that I've ever done in my career have been because I said yes when I like had doubts in the back of my head of like, I don't know if I can do that. I mean, even, even the Disney Junior Dance Party, that was because that was the first show at Disney that I got cast in, and like that's a it's a very dancey show. Um, it requires a lot of like quote unquote swag that mm -hmm. I <laughs> do not, did not, cannot have. <laughs> so, so I you know I didn't know if I was going to be able to pull it off, um, mm -hmm. but obviously the creative team saw something in me, and so so I you know said yes, and and here I am. Know, obviously the show is not going on right now because the the park's closed down because of quarantine but uh -huh. um, it's been about two and a half years that I've been doing that show so hmm. um, so yeah so self-awareness but don't put yourself in a box um, get with a voice teacher voice teachers are super important and I know mm -hmm. when I I didn't start taking voice until high school and there were times where I was like, I don't know if I'm learning anything. I don't, you know, this is a waste of time. I'm not singing the kind of music I want to sing. Why are we doing all these scales? Um, like, <laughs> but those kinds of things are super important in building your voice because especially when you're young, your voice is, it's growing. Just like your body is growing, just like you're, um, you're getting taller, you're, you know, you are growing into adult, your voice is changing and developing too. And so to have a, a, like a professional voice teacher who is guiding you through that process is super important. Um, like you don't, you don't w win any bodybuilding competitions by not going to the gym. 
Mm-hmm. So that's what I always tell people when they're saying, like, do I really have to have a voice teacher? Yes, you do. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, what I, I said, self-awareness, um, not putting yourself in a box, get with a voice teacher, um, and just do it. Like, audition for, for stuff. If your school doesn't have a theater program, find a community theater program, um, and just do shows just like the experience makes such a huge difference in growing you and that's how you get good that's how you get better at things is by doing it um so so yeah that that would be my advice to anybody that wants to uh do this yeah okay and i know i said we were going to wrap up but um one more question (laughs) do you have anything going on right now um so right now i am just chilling at home really i i have a a studio in that we're in right now it's my my little recording studio and i have <laughs> recording equipment and everything um so yeah had a handful of like recording projects come in um where people need me to record vocals from home um because obviously none of the like recording studios are open yeah um so but that's, I mean, it's pretty few and far between. And, and right now we're just kind of waiting for, for what the news is going to be on the parks. Um, cause Disney, Disney and universal are, are really my, like, that's my day job essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, so any like extra gig work or whatever like that, that's not, um, stuff that I generally rely on financially. It's more of like, that's my passion, what I love to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we're, we're waiting for the parks to open up and, recording a little bit have it have a handful of, of projects there is a uh, um an online variety show that uh my fiance and i sing for every now and then on saturday nights um mm-hmm. it's called uh, polly's online variety show and their website is onlinevarietyshow.com so you can tune in on saturdays i think the show starts at 6 30 um every every week um we don't perform every week we are performing this saturday um so if you want to watch then you totally do that um but yeah other than that just kind of you know waiting for for things to die down and for for us to get a a grasp on this pandemic yep well thank you connor for coming on the show and we can find you at on instagram at connor smith official is there anywhere else we can find you um my website is www.connorsmithmusic.com um i'm on facebook uh my name is connor warren smith um, I pretty much accept everybody's friend request unless you look like super, super shady. <laughs> um, so, so you can find me on there. Um, on YouTube, my YouTube channel is uh, Connor's Place. Um, I have music videos and, and all sorts of stuff up there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I jet, like literally just yesterday joined TikTok. I know I'm super late. All you kids are going to come for me. Um, but I just joined TikTok. <laughs> my first post is up. Uh, my TikTok is at Connor Smith Music. Okay. Well, thank oh, you, yeah. Connor, for coming on the show. And Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye. Of course. Bye, William. <laughs>